Representing Texas, head coach Jarrett Elliott, Yazi Bedart Hani, Kat Brooks, Molly McCage, and Amy Neal. Coach, if you'd begin with an opening statement. Well, we're obviously honored to be here and represent the Big 12. Um, we know it's going to be a special uh, Final Four with uh, here in Omaha because the crowd is so wonderful, and you know we've got a lot of respect for what Minnesota and Hugh can do, and um, we're just we're just so happy to represent the University of Texas. Before we open the floor, as a reminder, please introduce yourself and the institution that you represent. We'll open the floor to questions to both student athletes and Coach Elliott. Uh, Coach Mike Malloy from NCAA.com. Uh, uh, Minnesota, when you look at the, the swings, is a team that's somewhat similar to yours. They have one hitter that gets um, a lot of swings. Uh, how, what is that like to go up against a team where there's one hitter is kind of the focal point? Well, you know, he's done a, a, such a terrific job of creating a system where it's still hard to be able to trap her because of the speed of, of the game that they play at. I mean, it's the fastest go set that. Um, arguably in the NCA, so <laughs> that we've seen at least. Um, and they've got a great setter, so they're on, on point. You know, I think it's the other players are the ones that can really hurt you as well. So it's not just one player is able to to take over. Um, we've got a lot of concerns with a lot of the different players. But yeah, she's going to take a majority of the swings. And obviously, you'd like to do a good job of trying to manage those swings and contain her to a certain level. Michelle Vogel from ESPNW. You've been here before, if my memory serves, and when uh, Final Four was here in Omaha. What does it mean to have this be an advanced sellout for the sport? And I, I know there's going to be a lot of red, but um, uh, you know, it's still a, a pretty good, I, I would say, um, uh, showcase for volleyball. Yeah, I think it's uh, absolutely. You know, we're, we're excited that we're here, obviously. We're excited to play in front of the Nebraska fans. Uh, they're you know, I think they're fair. They're they're good people, and they appreciate good volleyball. So, um, I think it's it's going to be an entertaining four teams that are playing. But I think it's also kind of a direction of where the sport is heading. I mean, there's continued fan growth. Um, our goal is to be able to get that kind of across the country, and we're starting to see it in our home state in terms of what's going on there and, and across many universities. The, the sport is developing to a much higher level. Um, the games are a lot more exciting. And uh, it's a quality sport. Eric? Yeah, uh, Jared, kind of along the same lines, uh, have you taken note of just the fact that all these are Midwestern teams, that there's no West Coast team here this year? Yeah, somebody uh, mentioned that to me yesterday. That it's the first time that uh, it's four teams from the central time zone. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can tell you that when I got to Texas in 2000, um, the state wasn't very hot. And now it's arguably one of the best states. And you know, California was the hottest state. And that's now you look at the Midwest in terms of how many great players are coming out of there. And it just it's you know, you look at the numbers of, of high school participants uh, in all the different sports, and you see what's happening in the sport of volleyball. And, you know, we're getting better athletes that are coming over from different sports, and uh, it's a, I think they're enjoying it. And it's it doesn't surprise me anymore. I think anyone can win from anywhere in the part of the country now. Tony. Uh, Tony Boone from the Omaha World Herald. Uh, this is for the seniors. Um, I wondered if you could just touch on the accomplishment of making it this far through every year throughout your career and a chance to end this thing the way you started it. Yeah, it's crazy to think that this is our fourth Final Four and that we're the only class at Texas to ever been to have been to four Final Fours. And I think it's just a testament to, you know, how many great players that we've played with in our four years here and just also the job that Jared's done recruiting in the past to build this program up to be able to do that. And it's just, it's incredible. I mean, it's really crazy to think about and we're just really happy to be here again. Amy, do you have anything to add? Um, I mean, like she said, Jared's done an amazing job here. I think uh, Eric, Tanya, Deanne, our trainer, Donnie, coach, Nathan, I mean, like Susie, our media lady um she's they just all do everything and they contribute so much to everything here so i think that they have a part of our success as well and just all the hard work that they put into helping this program succeed molly um yeah i just think it's just a matter of how hard we worked over the years and what kat said there are so many 
great players that we've played with, and every single team is different. But I, I love that each year we're we're willing to work with the pieces that we have so we can be successful. Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World, Coach. Uh, I know you can't just pick whoever you want, and that's how recruiting goes. But I'm wondering how familiar you were with Kelsey Payne before she came to Kansas, and and if you could just discuss what you think, how she's done so far and, and made an impact, obviously. Yeah, I think uh, we were very, I mean, we were well aware of her. You know, she came on a couple of visits with her and we looked at her, she's in our backyard. And so, you know, sometimes this recruiting goes at such an early age, you, you're learning a lot about where they are emotionally as, as young ladies. And um, we knew she had the talent to be extremely good. You know, that was all of a position. And, you know, at the end of the day, we, I made a miss. And it's not the first one that I've made a miss on. But she's a great player playing for a great coach and a great program. And it's, it's great to see her succeed. And, you know, there's, I don't regret any, any part of it. I, I think she's happy. And, you know, I wish her the best of luck. Ryan Atulo, Austin, American Statesman. Molly, the only players in the field right now who have Final Four experience are from Texas. Can you just talk about leaning on the past three years, uh, those experiences to, to, to get ready for tomorrow. And then Yazzie, if, if you could answer then, what are the veteran teammates on your team telling you about this experience and what you should expect? Um, yeah, we've been here before, so we know exactly you know what we're <coughs> going to do today and tomorrow and how to prepare. Um, that being said, like our team is very different. so. The way I prepare tomorrow is way different than last year. So um, just getting our team ready is a different process. But um, yeah, it's really nice to have an advantage and just to be comfortable here because we've played in a big crowd. We've played in front of Nebraska fans several times. Um, so I'm excited that our team will be comfortable. Yazzie. Yeah, um, they've really helped us all with just being comfortable in the tournament. I know step by step. Um, they've just told us one point at a time, one game at a time, look at each opponent um, by themselves and just don't look ahead. And throughout the whole tournament, they've just been great with keeping us all, like telling us all how to do like the tournament and get through it. And um, so like now that we're here, they've just been keep confidence and everything like that. Uh, Chris Lazarino with Kansas Alumni Magazine. Coach, with apologies for another Kansas question. I know your mind's on Minnesota 100%, but um, could you offer some perspective? You, you guys have obviously seen Kansas. Offer some, some perspective about uh, their victory over USC. And um, does that speak to a, a growing level of parity in the sport or the Kansas program itself? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously we know the, the program well. Um, you know, I'm very tight with, with Ray. Um, we got to see them twice this year. You know, I don't think they played very well when they were down in Austin. Uh, I thought we played exceptionally well. And then I thought it was a very, very competitive match when we played there. They could have gone either way. You know, we just executed late in game five, which was uh, good from our part. But, uh, you know, they, they cause a lot of problems based on all the movement they have. They run a lot of different play sets. Um, you know, Kelsey has the ability to go over anybody and be able to create some different angles. Um, but what isn't talked about is how good their setter is. I think she does a phenomenal job of just running around. She's really fast and gets her hands on the ball and puts up quality balls. And their defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. So the combination of being able to counterattack with their defense and their setting can become overwhelming at times. And they've got the player per personnel to be able to, you know, hurt you from the left, hurt you in the middle, and hurt you on the right um, based on kind of what rotations are in and the, and the personnel that they've put together for this team. Coach, um, uh, Coach, uh, two years ago uh, when when uh, you beat Nebraska to get to the Final Four, uh, I remember you made a comment during that press conference that there's a you know people chide Texas by saying, well, it's just a bunch of good athletes, and all we have to do is you know open the door and let them go into practice. Does the fact that you guys have made you you brought that up, and is the fact that they've uh, you guys have made the Final Four five years in a row, does that? Dispel that uh, that myth about there that it's just a bunch of athletes and not great volleyball players. <laughs> well, I would love to put those people that say that in my shoes in terms of how much management goes on to be a coach. You know, yeah, obviously there's some advantages when you have great talent, but there's also some more challenges because you got a lot of Type A personalities and you got to be able to blend this kind of talented players and in the system that you develop has to be good 
uh, from year in and year out. So you've got to have a good staff. There's a lot of things that go on that I think make this more reality. And it's, it speaks volumes of what our seniors have done in terms of the culture that we've created. You know, right now my hands are kind of off them. They're just kind of they're cruising and they're playing, and we've got a lot of trust in their leadership. Um, but yeah, it's look. No one expected this. I don't think this team to get here with. You know, some of the er injuries that we had early on and, and the unity of this team is tighter than it's ever been. And, and when you have that, you know, great things can happen. And it's the reason that we are sitting in front of you guys today. So um, if that's what the criticism is of me or my program, I will take that all day long. Uh, Greg Eklund, this is for KUT in Austin. This is for Amy. Uh, being an Austin native, this is a different stage altogether, but if you could reflect for a moment on the path uh, through Austin that it took to get here. Can you can you share that? Um, yeah, it's been incredible playing in front of my family at every single game. I actually have 15 family, family members coming to Omaha today. So I just think the fact that I've been able to be with them at every single game is like, it's incredible. And I wouldn't have wanted it any different way. And just the fans in Austin, besides my family, are crazy. I mean, you saw Gregory Jim on Saturday in the Florida game. But just playing in that environment and those fans are just so much fun, and they get us going. So I just think being in Austin in that environment is huge for our success. You know, the, the talent you were just talking about, five of them, all Americans today. Can you just comment on that accomplishment? Is that official now? I can speak to it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, there's only one ball to go around, and when you have five All-Americans, um, it's pretty special. And it's uh, again, I think there's so many pieces that go into to, to those players deserving that. But it, it's not only the players that earned it, but it's the players that are around them. And you know, I think this is the most that we've ever had uh, as a program. So it it, it kind of shows cases what we have as a team this year that we're more of a when I say team, it's not saying that we weren't teams before. It just when it, we're utilizing more personnel on a consistent basis instead of overloading certain players. So, um, yeah, to me, it's, you know, we, we make a quick announcement of it. It's, it's very, um, so it makes you proud. It makes you, you know, realize what these players have sacrificed to get to that point. But more importantly, I think, and I think these girls will speak on it, they, their goal is not to be All-Americans. Their goal is to win a national championship. I think those are the things that they work for every day, and that's what their goal is. Clint Robis from the Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, this is for the athletes. Um, Minnesota and Nebraska are both in the middle of finals week. I was just curious where you guys are in the semester, if you have finals this week, or if you've had a crazy final story at this point in this week with traveling and all that stuff. I didn't know that. Um, I actually finished two weeks ago. So I've been cruising. Yeah, same I'm with. Done. I'm done too. We're we calm finished major about a week ago. <laughs> it was pretty bad the first, first round. First and second round. Yeah, was, that week was. That was a really bad week for us. but. I think we've all been done for like a couple of days. I think the days. last final was uh, yesterday, and it was only one person. So we've Worked all been cruising. Nicely. Yeah. We try to organize it so they're done before this point. That's part of the preparation that we go through. Um, yeah, I know. I know, Amy. This is for you. Coach is talking about individual honors aren't a big deal, but you did have. You know, I talked about you had a, a rough freshman year, and mm -hmm. now here you're a senior, first team All American. What does it mean to you to have made the, the journey that you've made? Um, I think the biggest thing I reflect on is just the hard work that I put in with my teammates to get there, and just how this team is so much fun to be a part of. And I couldn't have done any of this without my teammates, and just my coaches, my strength coach. Everyone has contributed to it, and just the confidence that they've given me and how much they've taught me about and like life lessons that will go on outside of volleyball, just about myself and what it takes to succeed at this level is probably the biggest thing. And just looking back, the sacrifices, the hard work is the biggest thing that I've noticed that pays off. Are there any further questions? Seeing none, I'd like to thank Coach Elliott and the student athletes for joining us. Our next interview will be at 215 Kansas. Thank you. Good luck, Coach.